Guided pictograms is a brand new function on the Husqvarna Viking Epic 3. Now first, we need to find menu I, so go ahead and scroll across the top until you find the building blocks menu. And you're gonna find that there's actually four categories. The first one, motif builder, that is fun, but I too is the guided pictograms. Now the reason this is new on this machine is because it has the projector and there are a handful of shapes, 25 total shapes that you can create and it's going to guide you of how to stop and start and when to turn and pivot. So I'm gonna walk you through what you need to turn on, which foot is recommended because as you're seeing, when you pick a stitch, it will actually show a question mark on that presser foot. So if you ever see that presser foot question mark, you need to actually touch the question mark at the top and touch the stitch. Now I always think I need to touch the foot, but it actually is touching the stitch. And when you do that, it will come up with two things required for this stitch. Number one, you do need to know approximately what size the stitch is gonna stitch out because this motif on this one is 50 by 60 millimeters. So that means that we're gonna to need to have some space and stabilizer properly prepared and to also know which way things are going. The next thing it says requires the guidance of projection. So yes, you will need to turn that on. We'll do that next. And tip for the best visibility, use the open toe foot for the IDF system. So I have that foot, which I'm gonna go ahead and switch out now and make sure my IDT system is pulled down and engaged. So that's really gonna help for when you come all the way back around and find yourself looking to connect that last stitch to the first one that allows you to see where you're going. So go ahead and X out. Let's just, for example, if we pick the Christmas tree number two and we do the question mark and touch the stitch, this one is gonna be 100 millimeters by 120 millimeters. So we're talking a good four inches plus to get that to stitch out. Plus, once we start, you're gonna notice there is an arrow of like which direction it's going to go first. So for example, I see an arrow pointing this way. So I know I need to start with my foot facing this way so my tree can form um, up this direction. So obviously you'll wanna do some testing before you get started, and then that way you won't be surprised. And I think once you do a couple of these stitches, you really kinda of get a fun idea. Let's go ahead and do a star. I'm gonna start with, oh, let's do the bigger one just for fun. This stitch technique requires guidance of the projection. Make sure the projection is activated before starting to sew. So let's do that next. Come up here to the projection symbol and go ahead and turn it on. Now, if everything is grayed out, it's because you need to touch the toggle switch that will actually turn the projection on. Now, did you notice that the light over here kind of dimmed? And that's because I have set my work light to be less and sometimes that will assist when you're projecting the line on your fabric and depending on your fabric color and your line color you're going to want to kind of maybe play around to see which one is going to show up the best so for example in the stitch preview which also needs to be on if it's not I see that my color is white, and that seems to be the best one for the foot. When you move over here, you can see at the, a glance that you'll be able to see what I'm seeing. We don't need to have the grid on, but you can see that there is a grid option, and there are stitch guide one and two. These are amazing features to set up with the projection, but all you need is stitch preview, the projection on, and maybe start to dim your work light a little bit just to see what that will look like. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand on the stitch we picked is that the star is gonna start stitching this direction. And it kind of looks like it starts in the middle of that top part. So depending on where you wanna be, and again, a practice run would be optimal. And also just to kind of get an idea how big everything is. So this is how it's going to start. 
I am a fan of using the start stop button with this particular type of stitch and also to set the machine to stop with the needle in the down position. You'll see why when it gets done with the first stitching row. Lower your presser foot if you just want to kind of get that going. Touch the needle down button if you want to go ahead and do that. And it's going to stitch this direction. So let's just go ahead and start with that particular row. This one is gonna stitch out as a triple straight stitch. So just go ahead and let it stitch until it stops. The message pops up when it stops. Before starting to sew the next part, rotate the fabric so the last sewn stitch is aligned with the projected line. So we see the projection of a straight stitch still in front of the foot, but this one appears more like a stitched line. So what we're wanting to do is pivot, and this is why I want you to stop with that needle down when you are uh, using this particular technique, and you're gonna pivot it all the way around until this line sits right on top of the first line you stitched. So now you can see that the next line is gonna come this way. So as you go ahead and stitch, you're gonna watch. You might even kind of eyeball, I'm gonna stop it for a second. You can kind of see that this is staying nice and parallel because once you actually start sewing, you're not on that line any further. So just kind of let it do its thing. We're gonna sew until it stops. Remember, this is the bigger one. We see that same message pop up on the screen again. Rotate the fabric so the last sewn stitch is aligned with the projected line. So here's the projected line. We're gonna line that up. I just trimmed off that little beginning tail so it's not in my way once I start again. Same message, pivot again, line up, start the machine with the start stop button. you can see, we are coming back to the home stretch. So make sure you get that all the way twisted. And now that guide line will help bring us back to where we started. Now, are you noticing that when we stitch, the line projected is actually not there. So for, as you get going, you can stop it, see if that line is kind of on track to hook up, maybe adjust oh so slightly as necessary. I know I we're right there and just let it again finish because it knows where it's, oh my gosh, it nailed that <laughs> last stitch so perfectly. Let's use the scissor button, cut that thread and take a look at what we created. So since we're back to where we started, do you remember we kind of had a half of a star that was showing on our screen and which way we were headed? So that gave us an idea that it's gonna do half of it before it continued on around. So that is one of the many, the 25 different guided pictograms that are built into the Designer Epic 3. I hope you'll try all the different ones because you can just have some fun and you can use this in so many places. And because that IDF is actually engaged, you could use this through fabric that is stretchy or with batting and quilted areas, something a little bit heavier and that will help keep everything going nice and smooth. But once again, give it a practice before you start to put it on an actual project. If you haven't already taken time to stitch out all your decorative stitches or haven't explored all the videos that are free that we are doing on the Designer Epic 3, you'll find links below in the description to all of our online courses as well as all the videos that are at your fingertips for this beautiful machine. Make sure you click the like button every time you watch a video and that's your way of saying thank you for the free information.